In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can recreate this exact animation which you guys can see on the screen right now. And in this video, you guys will learn to create smooth documentary animations like Vox, how to get all the materials to create these animations, and as well as you get the access to the full project file of this animation in the description of the video. So yes, let's get started with the work. And we'll start by creating a new solid layer into our composition. And then we'll be keeping its color in a yellowish white theme. Next, I'll be adding some grunge textures into our composition. And as well as some paper textures which you guys can get from Innova 2 Elements or from Canva itself. Currently, I already have them downloaded on my computer. So I'll be inserting them directly into the composition. Next, what I'll be doing is actually changing the blend mode of the texture from normal to multiply. After that, I'll be needing a picture of George Bush. So what I have done is actually get the picture from the internet and then I'll be using Canva to actually remove the background of the picture. Now, once that is done, I'll be adding the picture into the composition and then adjusting its scale as well as its position. And then I'll be adding an effect called black and white. So that our picture becomes in black and white format. As well as I'll be adding another effect called brightness and contrast so I can manage the contrast and brightness of the picture. Now I'll be adding a VHS static overlay onto the composition to add a static look onto our whole scene. I already had this file inside my computer. You guys can literally get it from Canva itself. Now what I need is a cutout of a 20 hour picture which I need to create the scene. And once I'll be getting the picture, I'll be adding it directly into the composition and then adjusting its position as well as its scale. After that, I'll be copying the effects which I've added onto the George Bush picture and then pasting it back right into the twin tower picture. After that, I need another picture of Barack Obama. And then what I'll be doing is actually downloading it from Wikipedia. And then what I'll be doing is actually go to Canva to remove the background. And after the background is actually removed from the picture, I'll be adding the picture into our composition. And then adjust this position according to how I want. Next, I'll be copying the effects from the George Bush picture and then pasting it to the Barack Obama picture. Next, I'll be getting a picture of Donald Trump and I'll be actually removing the background from Canva and then adding the picture into our composition. Once that is done, I'll be adjusting the scale as well as its position. The main thing for this style of editing is the selection of picture. That is why it's really necessary to use the pictures that are showing strong emotions. And then I'll be copying the black and white as well as brightness and contrast effects to our Donald Trump picture. After that, I'll be adding a green screen animation of a smoke. And I got this video from YouTube and you guys can do the same as well. After that, what I'll be doing is use an effect called key light one and two. So that we can remove the green screen from the video. And then you guys can see only the smoke is left on our screen. After that, we'll be changing its blend mode from normal to difference. So that the smoke becomes in darker format. And then we'll be adjusting the position as well as scale of the smoke and keep it behind the Barack Obama picture. So that we can show that the twin tower is burning and is covered in smoke. And then we'll be creating a duplicate so that we can create more smoke in our screen. And then we'll be keeping the layer behind the twin tower. Next, what I'll be doing is actually getting a CCTV camera picture from Canva and then removing its background. And then after that, we'll be pasting it into our composition. And then adjust the position as well as scale of the picture. And then copying the black and white effects which were used previously. But this time, what I'll be doing is actually using the tint button and then changing its color dark red so that we can get a tinted look into our picture. And after that, we'll be getting another CCTV camera picture and then adding the same effect onto it as well. Next, what we'll be doing is actually use this picture as well. I literally got it from internet and then removing its background and then adding it into our composition. After that, we'll be adjusting the size of it. But next, what I want to do is actually remove the people which are close to the edge of the picture, which you guys can see on the far right as well as the far left of the picture. So we'll be using the pen tool to create a mask which will help us to remove and cut out these parts. So first we'll be masking the far right person out of the picture. And then once we have the mask completed, we need to go to the mask tab and then change the mask from being added to subtracted. And then you guys can see the person is actually removed from the picture. Similarly, we'll be doing this for the far left person. We'll be using the pen tool and then selecting the same picture to create the mask. And after our mask is completed, the person is actually cut out from the picture. And then we'll be adjusting the scale and position of the picture. And then we'll be copying the effects which we added onto the CCTV cameras and then adding it to the picture. Now next, what we will be doing is actually use the rectangle tool to create a square around the faces of the people. We will keep the fill off and then we'll be using the stroke button to actually adjust the size of the stroke and actually change the color to yellow. And then we'll be loading the amount of stroke so that we can have the perfect size. After that, what I'll be doing is actually creating opacity keyframes to create a glitching effect 
on to our shape layer and then we will be copying the keyframes to the later part of the shape layer and then what we will be doing is actually duplicating the same shape layer and actually positioning it right to the faces of the other people and then we will be adjusting the shape layer's keyframes so that they are actually not being actually glitched at the same time altogether. Now once that is done, we will be using the pen tool to create a shape layer around Barack Obama which will be some kind of a marker around his face. We will be changing the color to red and then changing the blend mode from normal to multiply and then adjusting the stroke as well. After that we will be going on to taper and then what we will be doing is increasing the end length as well as the start length of the taper. You guys can see right now the edges of the marker is actually a lot more slimmer. Next what we will be doing is actually use another texture overlay which I already have in my computer. I got this from Canva so you guys can do it as well and you can also use Invato elements to get these elements. After that is done what we will be doing is actually making all the components into 3D so that we can create a 3D composition and animate the whole composition at the same time. Now once that is done first we will be making position keyframes on the CCTV cameras. To do that first what we will be doing is selecting the position by pressing the P button, press the stopwatch as well as the ART button to get the expression bar in the screen and then we will be adding an expression called posturize time and entering the value 12 in it as well as we will be adding wiggle 4,5. So what this actually does is actually lowers the frame rate of the picture to 12 frames per second as well as wiggles the picture in 4 values of y axis and 5 values at x axis. Now you guys can see right now the picture is sometimes overlapping the Donald Trump picture. The reason why this is happening is because both the pictures are actually 3D and because the position of the z-axis is also changing for the CCTV camera, sometimes the Donald Trump picture goes behind the camera. So to fix that, what we'll be doing is actually decreasing the z-axis by going into the position and, and decreasing the third parameter so that it actually goes to the front of the camera. Now you guys can see on the screen, there are no problems at all. Similarly, I'll be adding the expression for the other CCTV camera as well. And the same problem is also occurring for the George Bush picture and also we will be making all the rectangle shape layers move forward as well. Now I will be adding this USA flag onto our composition and I got this picture from Canva. First we will be making the layer 3D and keep the layer behind all the layers so that it is behind all the pictures and then change its blend mode from normal to multiply and also we will be adding the same expressions to this picture as well. What we will be also doing so that the background does not overlap with the pictures. We will be increasing the z-axis of the position so that the background goes behind the pictures in terms of being in 3D. Now we need to create a rotation keyframe on the American flag. So first what I will be doing is actually moving the anchor point of the flag to right at the bottom of the flag so that the rotation point of the picture is actually from the bottom. Now we will be pressing the R button to show the rotation and adding keyframes for rotation. Now we will be adding a trim path animation onto the marker which we created for Obama and we will be pressing the add button and then trim path. And then we will be pressing the keyframe on end and it is already 100 so that is why it will be our first keyframe and the keyframe will actually start from 0% and then we will be selecting both the keyframes, press the F9 button to make them smooth and then using the graph editor we will be making them faster. So you guys can see right now the smooth look of the marker. After that I will be creating a new solid layer and keep its color to black. And to create those cinematic black borders, I'll be using an effect called CC Jaws and then add it to the solid layer. And then increase the completion and keep the height to zero and adjust its completion so that it is perfect for us. Now once that is done, we'll be creating another shape layer to add the text and keep the layer below all the texture layers so that it gets the texture as well. And then we'll be making it 3D and adjust the z-axis of the shape layer so that it comes on the front. Changes blend mode from normal to multiply. After that, we'll be using the text layer to add text onto our picture. After that, we'll be using the text layer to add text onto our video. And we'll be adding the text age of surveillance. And then use the font here Neo has gross tech display. I'll be just confirming the spelling of surveillance and then copying it into our composition. And yes, definitely I was wrong here. We'll be making the font size of the upper part age of smaller. And also, we'll be increasing the line spacing between the text and increasing the font size of surveillance word as well as the line spacing and after that we will be making the text layer 3D and below all the texture text layers. I will be selecting all the components on the composition and then just adjusting the position of it so it is more centered on the screen. Next what we will be doing is actually creating a trim path animation on the recent shape layer which we made. Again we will be creating a keyframe on the end part and start animating it from 0%. 
In selecting both the keyframe and pressing the F9 button to make it smoother as well as making it faster on the graph editor. Now next I'll be using a free preset from Animation Composer by Mr. Horse to add animation on the text. For that first I need to go to Windows and then go to Animation Composer 3. After that in the starter presets we'll be going to transition text layers and then I'll be selecting this transition for the text layer. So this is how currently our animation looks like. So next we'll be creating a new camera layer as well as a new null object. We'll be paralleling the camera to the null layer and then making the null into a 3D layer. We'll be animating the whole composition using the zoom in and zoom outs. So first we'll be creating a zoom out effect onto the whole composition. We'll be doing that by increasing the z-axis of the null layer and then we'll be adjusting the position of the whole layer onto this point. And then select both the keyframes, press the F9 button and then using the graph editor we'll be making it faster. So it looks something like this. So to add more motion and depth onto the animation, we'll be animating both the Trump picture as well as the George Bush picture. So that they come onto the composition from left side and right side. Like you guys can see on the screen right now. I'll be just adjusting the brightness of the left side CCTV camera because it's already white. And this time I'll be moving the whole composition to upward side. So that we can create a transition between the scenes. But as the background is actually also moving, we need to use the CC Reptile effect to make the background become extended even on the upper, left and right side, according to how we want. And right now we have focused on making the picture being repeated on the upper side as well as make its blend model to 100%. But because the textures are not 3D and they are actually stayed at the same place, we cannot feel that movement effect onto the whole composition. So to fix that, what we'll be doing is actually making the textures into 3D layers as well and then use the CC Repetile effect to extend the textures, as you guys can see on the screen right now. We need to expand it to upward a bit more, so we'll be doing that, as well as doing it for the other texture layer as well. So now you guys can see right now, we can feel that movement into the whole composition. So for the next scene, first what I'll be doing is actually getting a Donald Trump tweet from Twitter itself and add the screenshot into our composition and first make it 3D and then we'll be selecting the tweet which we want by masking it using the rectangle tool. After that is done, what we'll be doing is actually changing the blend mode to multiply so that the tweet is actually blended with the background. Now next, we need some protest images. So I'll be using this image which I got from Canva and adding it into our composition. We'll be adding a grid effect into the picture so that we can create borders around the picture. So to create the border, first we need to keep both the anchor points to zero and set the corner points to the sides of the picture, which for this picture is 1920 and 1080. And also make the blend mode to add, so that it is added onto the picture and increase the border value for more thickness. After that, we'll be adding a drop shadow effect onto the picture, so that there is more depth onto the picture, as well as a Venetian blind effect to add more style onto the picture. Next, I'll be using this picture from Canva as well and then removing his background because we only want the cutout of the woman and adding it into our composition. And I'll be using another picture and get its cut out by using the background remover tool and then add it into our composition as well. Now I'll be getting another image and then also remove its background as well so that I can add it onto the composition. So this is how currently our cutouts together look like. Now what I'll be doing is using the pen tool I'll be creating shape layers here and then adjust the stroke and then change the blend mode to multiply not saturation, but I'll be doing that later. So because the layers were not 3D, we actually adjusted the positions of all the cutouts. And then we'll be keeping the shape layer behind the cutouts. Now next, we'll be creating a trim path animation for the shape layers like we previously did for the other shape layers. And then create a end keyframe at 100% as well as at 0%. And then select all the keyframes and smoothen it using the F9 button as well as using the graph editor. So it looks something like this. Now what we will be doing is actually duplicating the shape layers into multiple shape layers. And we'll be adjusting the size of the above shape layers so that it does not collide with the trump tweet. So that is why I'll be removing these two shape layers and adjusting the top shape layer first. And then when it's adjusted, I'll be creating the duplicate. And then adding a text, the far west. Now next we'll be adding position keyframes for the cutouts as well as the picture. So first we'll be doing it for the black and white picture. Next we'll be doing it for the first woman cutout. After that we'll be doing it for the hand cutout. And then finally for the yellow signboard cutout. And as well as for the Trump tweet. And then we'll be selecting all the keyframes, pressing the F9 button and using the graph editor, we'll be making them faster. Now next for the text, what I'll be doing is actually use a typewriter effect on the text. What I'll be doing is actually press add button and then go to opacity. And then I'll be making the opacity zero and then go into the range selector and make a keyframe at start at zero point and the final keyframe at 100%. So you guys can see on the screen right now how we did it. Now next we'll be using the same position expressions onto the pictures as well. Now we'll be using the same expressions which we used in the first scene for the pictures used in the second scene. Now you guys can see right now we are facing the same issue of the pictures actually colliding. So that is now fixed by actually decreasing the position of the front picture. Similarly we'll be adding the expression to all the pictures in the second scene. Now once that is done, 
it's time to make a transition to the third scene. So to do that, what we'll be doing is selecting all the pictures as well as the tweet in the second scene and actually create position keyframes and move all the pictures slightly right in the middle, which you guys can see on the screen right now, I'm doing it. You can select all the keyframes, press the F9 button and using the graph editor, we'll be making it faster. So it will look something like this. And at this point, we'll be selecting all the layers in the second scene and then pressing the Control Shift D button, we'll be cutting them all. And we will do it similarly for the shape layers as well. Now for the third scene, first, what we'll be using is actually a White House picture, which I got from the internet and then adjusting its position as well as making it 3D. But first, what we'll be doing is actually add the black and white and brightness and contrast effects onto the White House picture. Now next, we'll be using the CIA logo picture and then adding it into our composition and then adjust its position as well as its scale. Now we'll be adding another picture of Donald Trump and then after making it 3D, we'll be setting its position. And then after that, we'll be adding another cutout picture of Joe Biden. I'm using Canva to remove all the backgrounds and then another picture of JD Vance. Now I want JD Vance to actually see on the right side, not on the left side, because already Trump and Biden are doing that. So what I'll be doing is actually go to the rotation, go to the Y rotation and then set it to 180 degrees. And then you guys can see the picture is actually flipped horizontally. Now using the pen tool, we'll be creating a shape layer, make it 3D and then change its blend mode from normal to multiply. So that the shape layer is actually blended with the composition. Next, we'll be pressing the add button to add trim path animation to our shape layer. And like we previously made, we'll be making a trim path animation. And then we'll be making the shape layer move behind all the picture layers except the White House picture. And after that, we'll be creating duplicates of the shape layer but we'll be adjusting its size. Now after this is done, we'll be selecting all the shape layers and make their keyframes move faster. Now what we need to do is actually create a transition between the second as well as the third scene. But first, what we'll be doing is actually add the expressions which we have done previously for all the other pictures in the scene. Now once this is done, what we'll be doing is actually selecting all the pictures and create a position keyframe at the point which they already are. And then move the timeline arrow to the points where the picture are actually cutted and move the pictures slightly to the center. And then select all the keyframes, press the F9 button and using the graph editor, make it a lot more faster. So you guys can see on the screen right now, it may look something like this. But what we need to do is actually cut the third layer pictures as well and remove its previous part from the composition. As well as we'll be doing it same for the shape layers as well. So it looks something like this. So to make the transition a lot more smoother, what we'll be doing is using an effect called camera lens blur. We'll be keeping its maximum radius to 12 and, we'll, and then we'll be adding a keyframe at the point where the cuts are happening, which is at this point. And then we'll be just moving two frames behind and making it back to zero and moving it two frames front and making it back to zero as well. So it looks something like this. Now we'll be adding a text right now, no radicals and also making it 3D. Now I'll be adding a typewriter effect which we previously made for the previous text layer and also add a position keyframe to the layer. Now we'll be creating markers around the no radicals text layer. So to create a cleaner markers, exactly use the oval tool to create an oval and then it adjusts its stroke and make its color to red as well as change its blend mode to multiply. So it is blended with the screen and then make it 3D and then adjust the rotation of the layer. And then we'll be adding a trim path animation to the marker as well. Next, we'll be creating a duplicate of the same shape layer and then adjust its position as well as size. Now our animation is almost complete. And now for the final touches, what we'll be doing is actually, I'll be creating a new adjustment layer and then add an effect called noise and set the percentage to 5%. Now next, I'll be creating another adjustment layer and add a CC vignette effect onto the whole composition. Because the vignette is actually too strong, what we'll be doing is actually masking the adjustment layer using the oval tool. And after we have masked it, what we'll be doing is actually pressing the inverted button and also increasing the feather so that the mask is actually blurred. And then we'll be also adding some Gaussian blur as well so that we can increase the focus onto the center of the screen. After that, we'll be creating another adjustment layer and add an effect called Posture's Time and set the frame rate to 16. And after that, our whole animation will be completed and you guys can see on the screen right now the result which we have created. So that is our tutorial all completed. So yeah, hopefully you found the video valuable. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that I can create more videos like these. If you guys want a roadmap of how I would learn video editing absolutely from scratch right now, I've created this recent video which you guys can check out. And yeah, hopefully you found it valuable. See you soon.